Good morning, it's, uh, it's Monday. This is the first of five this week. Uh, so it's, as per last week, 10 questions. Um, obviously the questions will pop up in a moment. Um, obviously write the question, show your workings. If you don't know how to do a question, um, just simply write it, leave it blank with you know, a good amount of space to write some notes in green as I go through it um, during the video. Obviously the quality of those notes is really, really important. The better they are, the more independent you'll be able to be, um, be tomorrow. Um, I was planning on doing some easier ones actually, um, but some of the feedback I've had is that people want harder ones, so um, these are gonna be more difficult. However, you know, kind of having said that, I'm gonna try and explain them as best I can as the week goes on. So do give them a go, and if you think, oh my goodness me, crikey, that looks tough, do give it a go. So, um, you know, if you're higher sets in key stage three, um, or you're doing, um, even if you're doing higher GCSE actually, some of these um, some of these will cross over with the with the foundation paper and the higher paper. So uh, a good mix today. So uh, let let's make a start. Okay, so you would have seen the questions, um, paused it, given it a go. You would have seen the answers, paused it, marked them. So now let's go through one by one. Okay, first one was work out three and two fifths minus three quarters. Is that right? Three and two fifths minus three quarters. Yes, it is. So um, first off, um, to be able to add or subtract fractions, you need to balance the bottoms. Okay, the denominator, the bottom number, needs to be the same. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do this question. I always prefer to convert this. This is a, a mixed fraction at the moment, so you need to convert this to improper. Remember, a mixed fraction is a mixture of whole ones and fractions. Um, an improper one means um, it's basically top heavy. Okay, so like kind of 14 thirds is top heavy. Okay, so that's improper. So first thing you need to do is convert this one to improper. So to do that, um, one of my favorite songs, Big bottoms, okay, you know the song? Um, I love big butts. So three times five, big times bottom. Okay, that's how I remember it. Big times bottom, add top. Three times five is 15, add two is 17. 17 what? Well, fifths. 17 fifths minus three quarters. That's all you did, you're likely to get a mark. So now I can start to, um, to, to balance these out. So I need to make these Bottom's the same, but with fractions, what we do to the bottom, we do to the top. So there's different ways you can do this. Just I like to multiply this side by the bottom number over here and multiply this side by the bottom num number over here. Okay, I like to lock that in as well. So this side, I'm going to multiply by four. This side, I'm going to multiply by five. 17 times four, what's that? 68. Five times four is 20 minus Three times five is 15 over 20. 68 minus 15 is 53 over 20. And that cannot be simplified. So that is your answer, 53 over 20. But it was given to us as a mix, so let's put it back into a mix. Remember, this means 53 divided by 20. I, I like to ask the question, how many of the bottom go into the top? So how many 20 is going to 53? There's going to be two, that's 20, 40. Got 40, but you want 53, which means there's 13 left over. 13 what? 13 over 20. All right. Okay, question two. So question two is, so I'm just looking for some paper towel. I think I've got me, it's gonna be a bit wet. Um, uh, question two is 3x squared times x cubed. 3x squared times x. That is rubbish. There we go. Found it. Let's try that again. So you can tell I'll do all this in one take, can't you? So we've got 3x squared times x cubed. So I personally like to, there's one x cubed cube there, so I'll just put a one there. Okay, so deal with the, 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 uh, the numbers first. So three times one is three. Okay, now obviously when we multiply powers, it actually means you add them. Okay, so there's a note to be made in green. Multiplying powers means add. 
just like dividing powers means take away. So this actually, if you kind of did x squared times x cubed, which is what he's asking us, that is actually asking you to do, because x squared is x times x, isn't it? Times x times x times x. One, two, three, four, five. x to the power of five. So big numbers, you just do it, you multiply them. One times three. Okay, remember I added that one in just to make it a bit easier. One times three. X squared times x cubed actually means you add those. Okay, so when it's powers, timesing means add and divide means um, take away. Okay, hope that's good enough explanation for that one. Next up, what is the gradient of the line? 3y minus 6x equals 2. So we know that um, this is the uh, equation of a straight line. So we know that straight line needs to be y equals something. So we need to get this y equals. So we need to get the y's by themselves at first. So actually the first step here is making y the subject. So how do I get the y's by themselves? I get rid of this minus 6x. How do I get rid of minus 6x? I do the opposite operation, so I add 6x. But what I do to one side, I do to the other. So that leaves 3y equals 2 add 6x. Okay, now we know the straight line is y equals, this is 3y. I don't want that, do I? Okay, I don't want that. So I need to divide by 3. And what I do, so I do to one side, I do to the other. So that becomes y equals 2 divided by 3, you just write as that. 6x becomes 6 divided by 3 is 2, so 2x. Okay, so question was, what is the gradient? The gradient is always next to the x. So if I just gave you a simple question like, you know, y equals 4x minus 3, next to the x is always the gradient, and the normal numbers, minus 3 in this case, would be the y-intercept, okay, where it cuts the y-axis, the gradient, how steep the line is. Okay, so if it was y equals minus 2x add 3, minus 2 would be the gradient, and y-intercept would be 3. Okay, so here, the gradient would be, for this question, the gradient equals 2, because the 2 is what is next to the x. Okay, quite a tough question. That you have to know quite a bit. You have to know how to rearrange, well, make y the subject, okay? And know that the straight line has an equation of y equals. So quite a bit goes together there. Um, solve 3x add 4 over 2. 3x add 4 over 2 equals 11. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to get rid of this divide by 2. Opposite of divide by 2 is times by 2. But what I do to one side, I do to the other. So this is just solving an equation. If I times this side by 2, it basically gets, gets rid of the divide by 2. Okay, just gets rid of it like that. So it becomes 3x add 4 equals 22. It's got times this side as well. Now it's just a simple solve equation. Okay, the x's by themselves, get rid of this add 4 by minus and 4. Thank you. I'm sure you all said that. But what you do to one side, you do to the other. So it means I end up with 3x equals 18. Divide by the number of x's, and then divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals 6. Okay, that sort of question, I've been, you know, went through that quite quickly, um, but come, do make notes, okay, as you go along. So as I work this way, I need to get rid of this divide by, divide by 2 first, okay. Next up is factorise 3x squared minus 4x. 3x squared minus 4x. So factorise means you put it back into a bracket. Okay, so if I've got a bracket, say I had um, 2 bracket 3x minus 2. If I expanded that, I'd get 2 times 3x, which is 6x, and 2 times minus 2, which is minus 4. Okay, so let's pretend now I have to factorise that. I'm just trying to show you what factorising is in case you didn't know. So, what's the highest number that goes into both 6x and minus 4? Well, 2. So, the highest common factor goes outside here. Okay, so that's the highest common factor. Then you ask yourself, whatever that is, 
And remember it's multiplied with brackets. Two, so the outside here, times what, gets us 6x. Well, it must be 3x. Two times what gets you minus 4. It must be minus 2. Okay, so that's what factorising is. Let's apply that to this. So what's the highest common factor of 3x squared minus 4x? Okay, well, it's just going to be x, isn't it? It's not a number that goes into both 3 or minus 4. So it's just going to be x on the outside. Ask yourself, x times what is 3x squared? Well, 3x. And check your right by actually doing it. x times 3x, or x times x is x squared. That's a 1, isn't it? 1 times 3 is 3. Okay, so x times what is minus 4x? It must be minus 4. Always check your answer by expanding it. x times 3x is 3x squared. x times minus 4 is minus 4x. Okay, so the notes in green there, you've been writing that highest common factor about multiplying and checking your answer. Okay. Always expand it at the end to check you're right. And what's next? Find the 50th term if the nth term is 5n minus 3. So 5n minus 3. So for this question in green, you're going to write the term you're looking for becomes the n. So all you do is you substitute the term you're looking for in. So I want the 50th term. Okay, and so n becomes 50. And 5n means 5 times n. So if n is 50, this basically becomes 5 times 50, which is 250 minus the 3 is 247. If I wanted the 10th term, I'd do 5 times 10. If I wanted the 6th term, I'd do 5 times 6. If I wanted the 1,000th term, I'd do 5 times 1,000. The term you're looking for becomes your n, and you substitute that value in. next? Round 4.5986. 4.5986. Is that correct? 4.5986 to two decimal places. So that's my first decimal place. This is my second decimal place. So my answer is going to have is going to look like that. And we all know my second decimal place is followed by an eight. Okay, which means this will round up. Okay, we all know that rule. If this is a five or higher, it rounds it up. If it's a four or lower, it stays the same. Okay, so because that's an eight, that has to round up. Well, after 59, you get 60, don't you? So it's going to be 4.6. And because it does say two decimal places, you do put the zero. Okay, if this was a four, if that was a four, the answer would just be five, uh, 4.59. Okay, because that would stay the same. But because it's five or higher, that has to round up. Okay, so because that one has to round up to 10, that has to go up as well. Quite a common mistake though, that one there, people make. Um, work out 1728 divided by 24. 1728 divided by 24. So um, I'm going to use bus stop method for this. So, and there's my bus stop, 1728. I always like to put the decimal points in so I don't get kind of freaked out later on. Divide by 24. Now, I need to know a 24 times table for this. So rather than trying to work them out at every single step, what I quite like to do if it's a tricky one is I like to write them down at the start. So um, I'm going to write my 24 times table out only up to 10. And the reason I'm going to write it up to 10 is because 10 times 24 is easy. It's 240. So if I get down to the 10th one, it's not 240. I know, I know I've gone wrong. So... 1 times 24 is 24, and it's 48, 72, uh, 96, 120, 144, 168, 192, 216, 240. So, that's the only maths involved now, to be honest. So, 24s into 1 doesn't go, so I carry my 1. Got 17 now. 24 into 17, doesn't go. Okay, my 17. 24 is into 172. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it goes 7 times. So I put my 7. But I've got 172, that's only 168, which means there's going to be 4 left over. 24 is into 48, goes 2. Okay, so 72. Okay, so that's a good example of how I try to make maths about kind of common sense and logic rather than about maths. Do it methodically and it's quite a bit easier. Okay, so again, 
If you got those wrong, you should be making good notes in green, correcting in green as well, so you can look back tomorrow and be, become independent. Increase 52 pounds by 10%. So we all know, to find 10%, we just move one decimal place. So 10% is going to be five pounds 20, okay? And it said increase, which is really important. Increase means you have to add it on. So if I've got 52 pounds, I'm going to increase it by 10%. So you do 52 pounds, add 10%, which is 52 pounds, add, or 10% plus five pounds 20. Okay, so 52 pounds, add five pounds 20, is 57 pounds 20. Okay, again, methodical. Nothing too tricky there, I hope. And if it was decrease, you take it away. I'm sure that will come up in the next, next four days. Uh, next one, estimate 76.3 times 25.2. So estimate in green, estimate equals round to one significant figure. So let's double check we know what we mean by one significant figure. One significant figure means you're gonna have one number, okay, one number, so like a seven, and anything else will become zero, okay? Two significant figures means you have two numbers and anything else is zero. Three means you might have three numbers and anything else is zeros. Okay, so this can only have one number. So you ask yourself, is that closer to 70 or 80? Well, 76.3 is closer to 80. One number, the rest zeros. 25.2, is that closer to 20 or 30? It's closer to 30. So, eight, 80 times 30, well, let's break that down. Eight times three is 24. My two zeros is 2,400. Okay, 80 times 30 is 2,400. If you need a two, 80 times 30. Okay, you can do it using that method as well. So, what I just rubbed off there, um, there are your notes in green to remind you, okay, you need to know what one significant figure is. Right, there we go, that's uh, the questions for today. I hope you, well, dare I say, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, oh, I nearly forgot, Rebox today, not a big fan of these. Um, they kind of are old school, but they're kind of like granddad old school, really. I don't, I seldom wear these. I did clean all my Rebox yesterday. Um, and Hugo did his school shoes as well. So anyway, um, enjoy the week, uh, be nice to your parents um, and give that a go. Good luck.